Hi everyone. My name is Sushant Hiranga. I am a business intelligence tech lead. So in this session, I am going to talk about how to unlock the potential of enterprise data assets using Microsoft Azure Data Catalog. So this is brief introduction about myself. I am working at Ira Analytics as a BI tech lead. So based on my day-to-day -day experience, I frequently update my blog. So you can find out my blog from this URL. And also I'm active in Twitter. This is my Twitter handle. And you can find my LinkedIn profile from this link. So this is basically agenda for today's session. First of all, we'll talk about uh, why do we need to have a data catalog? So after we'll discuss uh, some common business scenarios and roles. And after that, uh, let's see uh, what is actual data catalog and have a demonstration on how to create an actual data catalog and register uh, some SOAR system and after uh, let's uh, walk through on Azure Data Catalog portal and discuss some uh, more topics and do a demonstration on how to search, annotate and tag uh, objects on Azure Data Catalog portal. So let's talk about uh, why do we need to have a data catalog. Nowadays organizations store data almost everywhere. So data can be in OLTP systems, data warehouse solution systems, big data systems, and data can be in file formats, web resources, and several formats. So it could be in on-prem or cloud like Azure. So users spend a lot of time to looking for data rather using it. When we need to create a report, it's hard to determine where the uh, required data exists. So in my experience, uh, I have worked with several domains like education, HR, and finance. So there are four systems I have experienced like uh, uh, tables, uh, th 200 to 300 tables exist in that four system. So if we need to create a report, I need to spend like uh, two to three hours to find where the uh, exact uh, tables exist. So having data available is no longer sufficient. Data must be understood and in order to provide strategic value out of it. So let's see some common roles we can find in the data space. System administrators. System administrator is the person who managing and administrating the systems. So everyone knows who is the system administrator. So next person is a data professional. Data professional is a person like uh, DBA, data warehouse engineers, database engineers, uh, like uh, people like us. So next one is a uh, data steward. Data steward is the person who mainly in business, who is responsible for the data accuracy and also who maintain the uh, quality of the data. So we can consider a data steward as a person like, uh, for example, uh, in the finance department, if there is a uh, person who knows who has worked in the finance department so many years and who knows in and out of the data and where the where we need to look at the data when you need to create a re, uh, requirement like data report so that person we can consider as a data steward and this term and position is uh, not a typical position like we can find in the organizations so uh, next person is the data scientist uh, the person who look at the data in scientific perspective uh, more into uh, advanced analytics, machine learning, and deep learning and stuff. And everyone, la last person is the business analyst. Uh, hope everyone knows who is the business analyst. Uh, mainly uh, work in the business uh, and do the analysis uh, with the uh, business tools. Let's see some uh, data consumer challenges we, uh, we can see in organizations. Uh, First one is uh, how do you know whether the data is existing in the systems? So for example, if we need to create a report, uh, how do you know exactly whether the data is exist or not? And even though we know that uh, data is there, how to uh, connect to those systems? And how do you know who are the internal persons? For example, if I am the uh, database engineer, okay, I am creating databases or uh, data warehouse solution. So, how do we know that who are the persons who are going to use these uh, systems? And next one is, uh, how can we uh, request the support from the experts? So basically, who do we know, uh, who are the persons uh, 
who are expert in these uh, source systems or these databases or this uh, particular domain area. So those are the some uh, co consumer challenges we can see. Let's move on and see some common business scenarios. Registration of central data sources. So for example, uh, there may be situations like uh, for companies and organizations, uh, after evolving so many years the, from the management, they decided to uh, go for a merging or acquisition. So in that case, uh, there may be two uh, companies uh, merging together and there are two uh, HR systems, two uh, finance systems, so on. So for example, uh, if I need to create a report, uh, HR report from the source systems, so it's really hard to determine where the, which data source I need to look at. So basically uh, too many source systems or too many sources overlapping in this scenario. Uh, next one is uh, self-service BI. Self-service BI is a term we can use uh, if a non-technical person or technical person, if that person can connect it to the uh, sources from using self-service BI tool like Microsoft Power BI by their own without uh, help from, from the getting help from the technical people and getting the data and creating some modeling and create the reports or dashboard by their own that can uh, be considered as a self-service BI. So the scenario is uh, if that person doesn't know uh, where I need to uh, connect it to the data source, what is the connection strings and so on. And what are the tables I need to look at? If the system is a data warehouse solution, uh, so what are the fact tables or dimension table I need to look at? So that can be a challenging part. And also after we connected uh, to the and uh, after we find what are the fact tables and dimension tables, what are the attributes I need to look at? So if there are no such a document we are maintaining, uh, so that's one of the challenge uh, can face in the self-service BI scenario. Next one is uh, capturing tribal knowledge, which means uh, in the organizations there may be employees who has been working so many years, like uh, 10 years, 15 years, who has the uh, uh, more uh, in-depth of knowledge about the source systems and the business domain, both in the technical perspective and the business perspective, and who knows exactly uh, which data exists in where. And we can consider that people as uh, experts on that area. So if, a, uh, for example, for instance, uh, if a new person joined into the company, that person uh, can ask from that expert, expertise uh, guy and get the knowledge and do their job like uh, creating reports and the so on. Let's move on and see how to capture all these business scenarios by using Azure Data Catalog. Azure Data Catalog is a fully managed cloud service whose users can discover the data sources they need and understand data sources. Uh, it's basically enable users to discover the data sources, understand, consume, and contribute. Primary goal of having data catalog to help organizations to get more value out of their existing investments in data. So let's move to the demo. In this demonstration, I'm going to create an Azure data catalog and register some on-prem data sources. So there are two main ways we can create an Azure Data Catalog from the, using this URL or from Azure portal. So one thing you need to uh, make a note, uh, only one data catalog can be provisioned per organization. The main reason for that, otherwise uh, if there are so many uh, data sources, uh, Azure Data Catalogs we can uh, provision, uh, then again we are going back to the problem which means uh, there are multiple uh, copies or multiple uh, data catalogs. And it's again redundant of the data catalogs. So I'm now in the Azure portal. So I'm going to create uh, my Azure data catalog using the portal. So similar to the other resources, we can create a new resource by clicking this button. And let me search data catalog. And let's see what we can find. In the resource set, uh, I'm going to pick the Microsoft Azure data catalog. So you can see uh, there is a description and 
uh, what is Azure Data Catalog, it's fully managed cloud service and registration system, Discover Enterprise Data Sources and so on. So basically it's mentioned there are two versions uh, in the Azure Data Catalog, free version and the standard version. In the free version support unlimited users and 5000 up to 5000 registered data assets in the organization. So in the standard edition it's up to 100,000 that's a lot and it's unlimited users also. By clicking here, I am going to create a Azure Data Catalog. So if you can remember my slides, uh, I mentioned that uh, there are they provide uh, they limited only one Azure Data Catalog can be provisioned. So in my case, my Azure Data Catalog already created. So which name is Catalog? So you can uh, here you can uh, choose the subscription and. When you create a data catalog, you can create a uh, assign into the uh, resource group. Whether you can create a new resource group or existing one. So in my case, I have already created a resource group ADCRG for Azure Data Catalog resource group. Uh, for me, it's a closest uh, location is the Southeast Asia, so I have chosen uh, my location as the for the Azure Data Catalog as a Southeast Asia. And here you need to uh, remember based on your preference and the your edition you are going to create in here as the pricing tier you need to select so in my case uh, i can select standard edition because i need to uh, register more and more data assets in my organization organization into the actual data catalog by clicking you can create a data catalog since i already created uh, i'll show you uh, so I have pinned into the my dashboard, uh, this is my data catalog, so basically it's uh, contain the information and let me uh, click and uh, go to the actual data catalog. It will redirect and open my actual data catalog, it takes some time. So this is my Azure Data Catalog portal. So you can see uh, in the top menu uh, there are four options like Home, Publish, Glossary, Settings, and Users. So in here, uh, 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 still the Home tab is uh, disabled because uh, I haven't uh, add any resource yet. So I'm going to uh, publish new data sources uh, sooner. So the, I'm in the publish tab. So let's see how to uh, publish new data sources into the catalog. So there are two options you can uh, publish data assets. Uh, first one is a launch application and the second one is uh, create manual entry. So in the manual entry you can uh, name it and uh, give a friendly name, give a description and uh, uh, request access and so on you can select uh, the preferred, uh, preferred uh, source system type and create the uh, data source into the catalog and also you can uh, mention since I have chosen analysis services multidimensional so you can select the object type and manually one by one you can add to the portal so in this demo I am mainly focused on how to uh, connected to the data sources uh, by using the this application they uh, developed from the Microsoft Azure. So it's a Windows based application. So let me launch it. And since I already uh, downloaded it, uh, let me open it, the application. So it will basically ask uh, to run that. So this is the application. Uh, to register the Azure Data Catalog uh, data sources into the catalog portal. So by clicking uh, this button, I can uh, connect it to the this application. So let me uh, provide my Active Directory credentials. So this uh, use Azure Active Directory to link our uh, on-premises or other any location data sources with the Azure Cloud and the Azure Data Catalog portal. So 
I have successfully logged into the uh, catalog by authenticating the my Azure credentials. So you can see there are so many source system which supported like SQL Server da uh, relational database, uh, SQL Server data warehouse, analytics services, reporting services, Oracle database, Azure Blob, and even you can see uh, big data file systems like HDFS, Hive, and so on. So if you are uh, working with the Azure Data Lake Analytics uh, that also supported um, by this Azure Data Catalog, Azure Data Lake Analytics and the Azure Data Lake Store. So you can uh, register your data catalog, uh, registries and the files into the catalog. So in my case, uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to register relational database as a common scenario into the catalog. By double clicking or click next, uh, you can uh, go to this page and you can provide the credentials. So let me give my uh, server name. So in here, I'm using Windows authentication and uh, even I can provide my database in here or I can choose it later. So by default it's an encrypted connection. So I leave as it is and click connect. So you can see in here the uh, set of databases or data uh, databases in my uh, SQL Server engine. So let me register one data source. I'm going to register Azure Adventure Works uh, DW 2016 database. So these are the available uh, supported database objects. Basically, for relational databases, it supports tables, views, sort procedures, and the function. So you can filter uh, and uh, register new data sources. So in my case, I'm only uh, I'm going to register only the uh, tables, not the views or anything. And let me by searching them and let me register a few dimension tables and the fact tables. So by this way, you can register the whatever the necessary database objects you want. If you can see here, it's a you can click uh, include preview, uh, which means basically it's uh, upload uh, sample data into the catalog for the uh, reference of the user. Then uh, you can understand the data, not only the metadata, but also the sum sample of data of the tables. Uh, I'll show you in later. And you can uh, include uh, by clicking this uh, include the data profile. And here you can add an expert into the this uh, source system. In my case, I'll add myself as an expert for this demo. And also you can add the uh, tags into this uh, data source. So let me add few tags. I added uh, three tags like DW, uh, Adventure Works and Sales so on. So you can, uh, by uh, separating comma, you can add more and more tags. Uh, so it helps to uh, search these database objects uh, during the catalog. So I will uh, show you how it uh, worthy. By clicking, it will register uh, these uh, items into the catalog. So during the registration, uh, let me uh, explain what's happening basically. So it's used uh, uh, because uh, Azure Data Catalog support fully REST API. So basically it connects into the uh, data source using the uh, credential information you provided and get read the metadata and the views from the system view and get the metadata. And if you selected the sample data or preview data, so it basically uh, what it does uh, go each and every tables or views and get the top 20 records and read the metadata uh, what we selected and 
what it does uh, it transfer all the data into the json format and transfer data into the azure data catalog via https protocol that's basically what happened so it takes a uh, few minutes to uh, register all the data okay now it's registered so what you can do uh, either you can go back to the uh, registration mode and uh, register more and more data sources if you need or else you can go to the uh, view the portal and see your registered data Now you can see uh, my home tab is enabled because I have registered uh, one data source. It's still loading. Uh, let me, yeah. In here you can see in the home page, it's basically uh, uh, represent a recent asset and you can pin the asset based on your usability. Uh, then it will, uh, you can quickly navigate those assets and here you can, uh, based on your tags, you can directly go to the that particular data source. So there are two views mainly, uh, tile view and uh, list view. So you can. So uh, let's move back the to the slides. You registered by using this. So uh, let's see some uh, popular data sources which support by the Azure Data Catalog registration tool and Azure Data Catalog portal. Uh, in my demo, I uh, demonstrated uh, how to register relational data source or SQL Server relational database and which support uh, tables, views, procedures, and function. In SSS or SQL Server Analysis Services cubes, which support measures, KPIs, dimensions. SSS tabular support basically measures, KPIs, and tables. Azure Data Deck store support directories and files, Azure block storage support, containers, directories, and files, HDFS or Hadoop distributed file system support directories, files, and Hive support tables and views. So if you are familiar with the, if you, if someone works with the uh, big data and Hive, uh, you know that uh, Hive is an abstraction of the uh, relational abstraction for the big data files. So it's basically you can find tables and views. So let's move on. Uh, in Azure Data Catalog portal, there are, uh, as I explained, uh, there are five uh, tabs or menu items you can find. From the home menu, you can see uh, how to navigate the databases, uh, tables, and the database objects you registered from the uh, tool. And in the publish tab, basically, you can publish new data sources into the portal. In the glossary tab, uh, which is a, uh, actually a view or if you have a permission for the, if you are the uh, glossary administrator, you can uh, uh, register new glossary items. And also, which uh, glossary is a, it's a business glossary. You can uh, register predefined business terms into the glossary. So later on, you once you register new items, you can tag those glossary terms into those objects. That's main uh, basic idea about the glossary. So I will demonstrate how to do that in next demo. So in the settings tab, you can, if you are a catalog administ administrator, you can configure the permissions for the users and you can set in the portal title basically. In the users tab, uh, you can verify the who is signing and clear the search history and so on. So in this demo, I'm going to walk through on Azure Data Catalog portal and uh, next after that, uh, we'll do uh, how to search and filter results and basically, We'll see how to uh, register new glossary items into the glossary and how to annotate those items and so, so on. So in this demo, we'll have a walkthrough on uh, Azure Data Catalog portal. So in the top menu, you can see in the home tab. So I'm in the home tab. So you can see the pre-existing registered uh, tags and number of assets and annotations and number of users and publishers. 
So in the publish tab, uh, like I said, uh, you can publish uh, new items into the catalog uh, by using the same way I did uh, during my first demo. In the glossary tab, uh, this is the uh, business glossary. Basically, it's a predefined terms you can register into the portal. After that, once you register the new data sources, you can add uh, those tags into the those uh, registered ob uh, database objects. In the settings tab, uh, basically you can set up the permission and so on like I explained. In the users tab, you can see who is the user exactly registered and you can clear the history if you want. So let me go to the uh, data source uh, relational data analytic adventure works database you registered. So you can uh, So this is the database uh, so, uh, I registered uh, during my first demonstration. So you can see the da uh, database name and even if you can by clicking this uh, you can add a friendly name. So you can add a uh, description if you want like in here. So if you can remember, uh, I have added myself as an expert for this and these are the tags. Even I can add more and more tags in here as well. So in here, you can see the connection stream to the this source. So you can, uh, because uh, this Azure Data Catalog is open for anyone in uh, any organization. So which means uh, even the non-technical users, they can uh, browse through the data catalog and see how to connect to these data sources and using a self-service BI tool they can connect to these data sources and import the data and create the visuals and reports they want. That's the main idea of having a data catalog and if you want you can make yourself as a owner for this and in here let me uh, So in here, what I'm going to do, I will add some uh, description for this database. So this is a sample description, what I search and found. So you can give a description like this. So if you can see, uh, you can see the uh, this description and information you provided and anyone can uh, uh, see and even if they have the permission they can edit those items and so on. Let me click, uh, let me go through the, if you want uh, you can uh, pin this uh, database which means uh, you can access from the home page if you want. So let me uh, filter and uh, get the more tables. So. Let's uh, move on one table. In here, if you can see, uh, it contain basic information about the tags and so on. Uh, in my case, I have added all the tag, uh, these three tags for all objects in the dat uh, database. And you can see the adventure works uh, DW uh, the database name. And from the right hand corner you can see the information and you can add a friendly name. Let me add. So already add the expert and uh, tax. So I'm not going to edit those items. So let me, uh, so this is the preview basically. So which contain the uh, top two, uh, 20 records of the information of, about the preview. So 
so any user who was who is going to use this uh, table they can get some understanding about what what sort of columns contain and what are the data and looks like so on by using the preview so this is the in this uh, it's a metadata contain the what are the columns and the column names data types and so on so if you can see uh, you can add individual uh, description for the columns so which give more information about the for the users about the columns then uh, if a new, uh, some someone else who is going to use this table refer this table for their reports or any analytics stuff so they can get some more and more understanding about this um, table in here it's a preview uh, profile which contain uh, more information about the data types and number of null null values count and listing values maximum minimum average standard deviation and so on so in here similar to the database you can add the uh, in the documentation section you can add more uh, detail view about the document about this uh, table and if you if i go back to the preview uh, so you uh, you can remove this preview at any time for example if there are sensitive data in your organization like finance data so you need to uh, take consider about that for the uh, security of those data so so for example you need to uh, upload the database into the this azure data catalog portal but there are a uh, few tables contain the sensitive information but most of the tables contain uh, doesn't matter even though it's shared with the among those data in other users within the other users in that case what you can do basically once you uploaded you can remove manually one by one uh, the, those sensitive information if you want i mean remove the preview each by one so let's move on and uh, go to the glossary uh, so this is the business glossary you can add uh, business terms into the glossary so in this case uh, there are no glossary items you can see uh, one thing uh, there are no way to uh, in here initially you can add glossary items so in order to add more items into the glossary uh, you need to go to the settings tab and here uh, there is a section for glossary administrator the thing is uh, currently there is no glossary administrator in this system so let me add the user in for this demo i'm adding myself as a glossary administrator and let's see what will happen so i'm go going back to the glossary tab so now i can add more items to the add items to the glossary so this is basically the, uh, the glossary business glossary so i am going to add few terms so i am going to add some definition and terms into the glossary so i added this information so which means basically the this is predefined business terms any business users can participate to the your azure data catalog because uh, this not only the consuming or uh, referring the read the metadata and get the information but also uh, anyone can participate and uh, contribute to the this community uh, then uh, the more more and more uh, if they can uh, come uh, contribute to the back to the this catalog then it's more usable and everyone can get understand about the data and the information so in here uh, let me click create and uh, i already created a glossary item which is sales so let me create another one and here you uh, what you can do uh, 
you can uh, create a hierarchy in the business glossary so in this case i am now going to create a reseller so i am going to uh, make uh, sales as the first uh, parent so likewise uh, you can create hierarchies and you can navigate it uh, the good uh, for the get the uh, best performance uh, the recommendation is uh, to create a uh, hierarchy up to the level three levels not more uh, in order to may uh, maintain the performance so let's uh, see how to we can tag those uh, glossary items so business terms into the existing uh, database objects we registered so i am going to open one of the tables so let me search okay this is a good example for that so i am going to annotate here at the tag factory seller so in here uh, it says suggested glossary terms so you can add the glossary term so you can see uh, it's a different icon uh, for the uh, glossary terms in this way you can add so you can uh, once you added so let me search it again So you can see when you hover uh, to the this tag, it will give the description about uh, the business term, and even you can click this open glossary and it will uh, re redirect to the that uh, business term, and you can read the full description about that. So let's go back to the slides. So this is the ecosystem of the Azure Data Catalog portal. So basically, uh, once registered into the uh, data sources into the catalog, you can search, browse, and filter those uh, by using filter terms, tags, and uh, search by uh, names and the tags. So once you discovered, uh, you can understand the metadata and and realize who are the experts on that and get the context of it. So after that, uh, you have the knowledge about the data source, then you, you have the data, you have the tools like uh, Power BI, then you can you start to use your own way those and consume it. So, but, uh, uh, and also if you are an expert on that data source, particular data source or particular tables, so you can contribute back to the data community by tagging uh, those items and update the documentation if you have the privilege you can update it you can add new uh, new tags and you can publish new items as well so in the in here you can see uh, extend uh, arrow uh, which represent uh, the support uh, this azure data catalog extends support uh, rest api so you can do all these stuff programmatically by using your c sharp code So like I explained in my first demo, there are two editions for the Azure Data Catalog. So uh, free edition and the standard edition. In the free edition supports unlimited users, but only 5,000 catalog asset, data assets can be registered. In the standard edition, uh, you it's up to 100,000 uh, data assets you can register into the catalog. And also uh, uh, th that has the feature for grocery administrator and add glossary items into the uh, catalog but in the free edition there is no uh, such function so like i explained uh, this supports by the rest api so you can register update delete assets using rest api 
and it allows to create update and delete annotations and search uh, stuff using the REST API code. So you you can note it uh, down like a data catalog is uh, REST, fully REST API support. So what you can do, you can populate or annotate process, uh, you can automate it by using ETL process. If you know the how to create a ETL packages, so uh, write C sharp code, you can automate this. The main purpose of having this feature is, for example, okay, we have the data source and we registered into the data catalog and uh, and after that uh, you can do the annotation, view descriptions and make it more usable. But the thing is, in reality, uh, things are getting changed over the time. So once it changed again, okay, if, uh, for example, if there are a data warehouse, if, if, uh, if you add a new dimension or fact table into the data warehouse, so then again you need to change uh, into the data catalog. So it's a re really hectic task and uh, it can be discrepancy in between your original data source and the catalog. So in order to avoid that you can, what you can do, you can automate this system. While it's getting changed, you can automate and uh, you can uh, do the those changes, apply those changes into the catalog via REST API. That's the one of the advantage of having this. So let's summarize uh, the this session. So initially we talked about uh, why do we need to have a data catalog in our organization. And after that uh, we discussed about the business scenarios and roles and we looked at uh, what is Azure Data Catalog and how to register uh, Azure, how to create a data catalog and how to register data sources into that. And we uh, worked through on uh, Azure Data Catalog for this. So that's pretty much about uh, this. So if you have any question, you can uh, comment it uh, below in the comment section and you can ask. So I'll happy to uh, get feedback from you and I, I'm more than happy to uh, answer for your questions. Thank you.